Now, let us further look at uh, characterization of systems along these two lines. So, that is we want to look at characterization of systems in terms of impulse response duration. So, the impulse response duration can either be finite or infinite and if the impulse response duration is finite this is called finite impulse response and this is denoted as FIR. If the impulse response is infinite just paralleling what was given earlier this is denoted as infinite impulse response and abbreviated as IIR. So, as far as discrete time systems are concerned among the class that we are interested in FIR and IIR systems are an important sub classification. Now, let us look at this simple difference equation y of n equals a times y of n minus 1 plus b times x of n and then we will assume y of minus 1 to be 0 and uh, let x of n be delta of n and then to satisfy the mathematician we will assume a naught equal to 0. Unlike uh, differential equations which are more difficult to solve difference equations are easy to solve all you need to do is start evaluating y for various indices. For example, if you look at y of 0 this is a times y of minus 1 plus b times x of 0 and y of minus 1 is 0 as per this assumption and x of 0 is for this given input is 1 therefore, y of 0 is very simply b. Similarly, you can find out what y of 1 is. So, you can recursively evaluate this difference equation and quickly see what the pattern is and uh, if you did this you will be able to see that y of n is b times a to the n and for n greater than or equal to 0. Okay. And uh, it is easy to see uh, this particular system that is y of n equals a times y of n minus 1 plus b times x of n. So, clearly the input x of n is delta of n which is the impulse therefore, y of n that we have obtained here is really not y of n, but h of n because we always use the special notation h to denote impulse response and this is what it is. It is easy to see that 
h of n is just let us go back and look at the classification we have given in terms of impulse response duration is this i r or f i r. So, uh, you know whatever it is, uh, is this I R or F I R? That's the question. This is indeed I I R because B times A to the N is of infinite duration. At no point does this become strictly zero. Uh, you should not look at it from the point of it decaying for example, if mod a were less than 1 that it will decay quickly and beyond a certain point reach a level that is practically 0 that is not the kind of classification we are after we are looking at it from a theoretical point of view. So, this is clearly an exponential that lasts forever for n greater than or equal to 0 and hence this is i i r. Now, the question to ask is by looking at the difference equation can we make some general statements regarding the system being i i r or f i r. So, clearly the system is i r in this particular case now let us look at this particular example y of n is b 0 x of n plus b 1 x of n minus 1 plus b 2 x of n minus 2. So, this is the input output relationship and what is h of n? all you need to do to get h of n is uh, replace the input x of n by delta of n right h of n is the impulse response x of n is the input input has to be the impulse if you want y of n to be h of n. So, h of n in this case happens to be b naught delta of n b 1 delta of n minus 1 plus b 2 delta of n minus 2 okay. and this system is clearly i r or f i r f i r because the impulse response consists of three samples starting at n equal to 0 it is b 0 at n equal to 1 it is b 1 at n equal to 2 it is b 2. So, this is a system whose impulse response is of finite duration. So, this is an f i r system. Now, if you go back and look at this general equation you can see that if all the a case are 0, then the system is f i r very easily seen from this that is if all the a case or 0 this implies system is f i r. Now, let us go back and look at this i r example that we saw. We know that the system is i r based on the example that we just worked out and we see that if the system is i r at least one a k is non zero. 
all right so if the system is ir at least one ak is non zero so now the question arises if one ak is non zero does it mean the system is ir notice carefully what statement we are making here if the system is ir at least one ak is non zero and the previous statement is just the contra positive of the bottom statement a implies b the contra positive is not b implies not a therefore at least one ak is non zero the converse of that is all ak's are zero so not b implies not a not a is ir becomes fir so these two statements are one is the contra positive of the other but what we want to ask is if at least one ak is non zero does it mean the system is ir 